Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, MNLG, and for today's vlog, I'm gonna discuss to you the second Newton's Law of Motion, which is the Law of Acceleration. And I would like also to thank other teachers from other schools who supported my vlog, um, The Law of Inertia. In a way, um, this discussion um, is just okay, focusing in the content of our module. So I guess we all have the same copy. So we all know that Sir Isaac Newton formulated the three laws of motion. So we have learned about the law of inertia. For today's um, vlog, I am going to discuss about the law of acceleration. But again, I know that you have watched many presentation from YouTube. You have read also from books or you have many reference a lot of. But my discussion would only focus on the two objectives in our module. So first objective we have show the effect of force and mass on acceleration that's the first objective second um, state Newton's second law of motion and the law of acceleration so um, before we end this vlog so we really need to answer the two objectives so to start let me read first the brief introduction of the law of acceleration first Sir, Sir Isaac Newton formulated the three laws of motion so namely we have law of inertia law of acceleration and law of interaction and these laws are the governing parameters of the study of objects that are not in motion and objects in motion. So in this particular module, so we will be encounter three quantities. First, we have force, mass, and acceleration. Now, these three terminologies that will be widely used in this part of the module. So this force, mass, and acceleration, we will keep on mentioning this term up to the very end so we will need to know the relationship of force mass and acceleration as we go along so in our previous topic we have learned about two quantities right so we have first scalar quantity so when you say sca uh, scalar quantity these are the quantity that only have mag magnitude right if we're going to speak about the vector quantity it has magnitude with direction or magnitude and direction so again um, in this module you will be learning the second law of motion and the definition of that is uh, in your module it states that uh, this law states that the acceleration of the body is directly proportional to the force applied to an object and inversely proportional to its mass so in equation this can be written as okay you can see that uh, we have a is equal to f divided by m or acceleration is equal to force divided by mass so we need to familiarize that these quantities have its representation and we, you should write it correctly for acceleration you have to write it in a small letter a force it can be written or you have to write um, in capital capital letter f well, mass should be written in, in smaller m. So, of course, you have to follow the standard in writing. Now, this equation can be rearranged to F is equal to ma, which is quantitative, which is quantitative representation to the second law of motion. The force is equal to the product of the object, mass, and its acceleration. What's the effect of force? Now, accordingly, if there is a net force of an object, the object accelerates. For example, it's very hard to push um, big objects. So, if you're going to apply more force, then of course you'll expect that there will be greater acceleration that will be released on that uh, particular object. Well, acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. So that's the effect of force. So I, I repeat, um, the effect of force. So if you, for example, if you apply lesser force, then of course you can get lesser acceleration. If you apply more force, then more acceleration. But it, acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. So a while ago, I mentioned about directly proportional because that is included in your module so what is directly proportional ano bang ibig sabihin ng directly proportional when we say directly proportional it means that if if the force increases 
acceleration increases. If force decreases, acceleration decreases. So, yan. So, it depends on the amount of force you applied. And then, the acceleration will also depend on the force. So, lesser acceleration means less force applied. Greater acceleration means greater force applied in the object. So, you got it now? That's the context of directly proportional. Going back to acceleration, acceleration acts in the same direction as the net force. In the law of acceleration, acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. To compare directly proportional from inversely proportional, so please take a look at this. Let us observe. Alright, if mass increases, acceleration decreases. If mass decreases, acceleration increases. So that's inversely proportional. So baliktad. Okay? Unlike directly proportional, pag once ang isa mag-increase, then the other one will also increase. But in, in the context of acceleration, if the mass increases, acceleration decreases. If the mass decreases, acceleration increases. So that's it. Okay, in the let's understand part, you see that there are formulas to be used in finding force, mass, and acceleration. In finding force, you simply multiply mass times acceleration. In finding acceleration, you simply do this force divided by mass. And when you are asked to find the mass, you simply divide, okay, force is divided by acceleration. And take note that each of this has its own unit of measurement. Uh, for example, okay, the force should be expressed in terms of the unit of measurement should be Newton. And it should be written in capital letter N. For acceleration, which is represented by small a, so the unit of measurement would be meter per second squared. And for the mass, it should be expressed, the unit should be expressed in terms of kilogram. So that is uh, the unit of measurement. You can also use the triangle method. So I know that you're familiar on how to use triangle method. So you, you have done that even in your math subject. So how to derive formulas. So um, we have this picture explaining the force. It stated there that force is to cause an object to change velocity or to accelerate, we need to apply force. That's correct. Let's say if we don't apply force, then of course the object will not move or there is no motion, something like that. Relating to the force and acceleration, small force equals small acceleration. Bigger force or larger force requires, okay, equals double the acceleration. So, what is the big idea of what we are talking here? So, the big idea is that an object accelerates when a net force acts on it. So, pag walang force, walang acceleration, right? So, that's it. In the let's recall part, okay, you are asked to complete the table. First, in the table, we, you're asked to fill in the the quantity, the symbol of the quantity for force, mass, and acceleration which you already know. So, force is expressed in terms of um, uh, force is N, mass is um, kilogram, and acceleration is, right? You can also find in the module that there is calculations involved. So, um, you're asked to follow the GRESA. So, GRESA stands for given required equation solution and of course answer so why is it that you are asked to do that no i know i believe that you know how to solve it but it's it is a manner of how you do it in a sequential manner so step by step um if you are really good in doing that so maybe you can have a shortcut method but to those who find it difficult to answer then try gresa first okay so i'll be giving you one problem here so let's answer. What is the mass of a water skier 
that is accelerating at 2.0 meter per second squared while being pulled with force of 110 newton so i'll give you one minute to answer the game begins in three two one Alright, so what's the answer? Okay, so the answer is 55 kilogram. That's great. So now you already know how to find out or solve mass. Because mass is the unknown quantity. Okay, good job. So that's it for today. So to wrap up, so I hope that you already know how to identify inversely proportional and directly proportional. And of course, do not forget the three laws of motion, inertia, acceleration, and interaction. Problem solving, and of course, the quantity of measurement or the unit of measurement that need to be used in that particular quantity. Okay, if, if, it, if the unknown is mass, if the unknown is force, and if the unknown is acceleration, so you really have to write the accurate unit of measurement and of course most important thing the big idea behind the law of acceleration is an object accelerates when a net force acts on it okay so that's it i hope that you have learned something today before i end uh, let me shout out first uh, aking mga students yeah and thank you for um, taking time to really study um, i really appreciate your drive your motivation to learn okay despite pandemic and of course um to my colleagues um of course to my grade level co-grade eight level teacher science teachers to sir chadi and mom gel thank you for being such a good teammate all right and of course to the rest of the science teachers thank you very much and of course, sa mga nagsa-subscribe pa dyan, nagsa-support sa vlog at sa aking YouTube channel particularly, thank you very much for taking time for your patience in watching my content at alam kong iba-iba yung content ko sa aking um, YouTube channel. Before I end, please watch the next vlog will be the law of interaction. That ends my uh, presentation of the, uh, the law of acceleration. So I would like to say bye everyone and thank you for watching.